Okay, this is an LXI heater. And what we've got going on here is that when the customer tries to turn on the heater, it doesn't come on, it doesn't shut off when it wants to shut off. And um, this is a problem that you're gonna experience with Jandy JXIs and LXI heaters. Um, the way that Jandy tells you to hook this heater up to automation is through a RS485 port. So it wires into here, it's a four wire connection, and then it wires into your control panel in your automation. Here is the RS485 connector on the control panel. You got one, two that are native to the board. And then a lot of times what you do is you put an expansion board in the back. I tend to like to have double-sided tape and have this stuck on inside there so that you don't get anything shorting out. However, at least there's some electrical tape on the back of this so that it hits cabinet, it doesn't short any wiring out. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna change this from a RS485 connection and we are going to connect it to the dry contact heater relay. And if you look over here on the board, it shows you that there is your low voltage heater relay. So the process here is we need to convert it from one to the other, mainly because our 480, I'm sorry, our RS-485 port has gone bad. And a lot of times when that RS-485 port goes bad, it will actually lock up the controller. It won't allow you to access it through the IOCA link. It will not allow the pumps to run correctly, and it will not allow any indoor control panels to work either. And so that's a typical thing. If you run into that type of scenario, then what you need to do is start disconnecting all of your RS-485 connectors until you get the control panel functioning right, and then one by one put them back and see which one is causing you the headaches. We are back at the heater and we are going to pull this 485 port out. Simply disconnect it. I went ahead and restripped the wires. I always like to have clean connections. And if you notice, I twisted the green and the black together and the yellow and the red. That way I've got more conductivity. I can carry more amperage voltage even though this is only a 24 volt circuit and the single wire would do fine, this just kinda gives me a little bit of backup. So we're going to take that wire and now we're going to insert it right here. And if you look at the labels on here, you will see that there is a common and a pool and a common and a spa. We are going to connect it to the common and the pool. You can now see that I've connected the green and the black wire to the common, and then the yellow and the red wire to the pool. Black and green tend to indicate that they are the ground or the common wire, and red and yellow tend to be either the power wire or the data wire. Okay, you can see that I went ahead and stripped down the wire and I twisted my red and yellow wire together and my black and green wire, which is exactly the combination I used on the outside. And now I'm going to connect those wires right to here because that is my fireman switch dry contact relay for my heater automation. As you can see over here on the panel, it says low voltage heater. And that is exactly what I've got going on here. So let's go ahead and, and attach these wires in. Okay, so what we have in this situation is we have to assign this heater to the T-STAT. So we're going to hold these three buttons down for approximately five to 10 seconds and you'll see the display come up here. And as we go through this display, 
we're going to look for remote we're going to select remote and then what we want normally it would come up as off you have a choice of high low and t-stat the way that we have it hooked up we want to select t-stat once we have selected t-stat then we will go ahead and select that and that if we hit it again we can see that we're remote t-stat it's saved so you want to verify that and now by hitting either the pool or the spa button we can come back to the main menu so now if we turn this on it is ready to go and it is enabled however you'll notice that it is actually not turning on because we do not have it on with our automation system so we're going to go ahead and turn it on with our automation system and now that we've and now that we have turned it on with our automation system, you can see that it is telling you that it's one of the things it says T stat enabled. You can see the set point over here is 104 if you want to make it lower. But make sure, typically, you want to set it to 104 because that's the maximum temperature for the heater. And if they have a spa, you want to be able to get up to 104. However, if it's just a pool, you may want to set this to 90 degrees just to be on the safe side. And that way, the pool doesn't get overheated and ridiculously hot if something should go wrong. So I've got this set to 90 degrees, and now this will go ahead and start heating up the pool. You can hear that the heater is in the fire. 